This is the follow-up to the video segment that I, that I posted today on inertia relief, where you ask CATIA to automatically uh, impose inertia relief along with the isostatic uh, restraint and uh, declare the self-balancing load, okay? Here, I will not use the self-balancing load aspect of CATIA and pretend that you want to do this thing manually because there may be other software that they don't have that particular functionality and you have to understand uh, uh, how to do that manually. So here's a situation. Uh, we have a rocket in flight and there is a thrust load that's applying, that's applying at, at the engine location and that causes an acceleration, which is uh, the, the thrust load over the mass of the rocket. So what you want to do is you want to apply T, you want to apply the acceleration, and then these are in dynamic equilibrium, but there are no restraints, therefore you have to apply the 1, 2, 3 rule manually. The, the meaning of 1, 2, 3 rule is you find three points. At one point, three degrees of freedom are set to zero. At another point, two degrees of freedom are set to zero. At a third point, three degrees of, uh, uh, sorry, one degree of freedom is set to zero. So uh, uh, in principle, that's the idea behind it. But it's not always that simple uh, because sometimes uh, you have to use a, a modification of that, which is equivalent to what I just said. Here's the situation. The problem, the problem with this uh, thing is uh, that a rocket, they don't have, it doesn't have any points, <laughs> you know. You know, this doesn't have any sharp corners, sharp edges that uh, I can take it as a point. Even up here, even up here, I can't take this point, you know. Now, there are ways to handle that, but the, the other thing is that look look at this, uh, look at this uh, uh, curved surface. There is no point that I can take. I can take these curves, but not a point. Okay, so what I'm going to do, first of all, is manually manually to create two points on this curve. Not three points, two points. You'll see why I don't need three, although it says one, two, three rules, three points, but I need, uh, in this particular problem, uh, only two. Uh, so here, a point uh, on a curve, on a curve, and it doesn't matter. Here is one point, for example. Right there. Okay, there's one point. And I'll do another one on this curve. Say here is, uh, let's, let's pick, uh, let me see now. Let me turn this thing around. Okay, here's, a, here's another point. So I have manually created two points on these two, on this curve. One is over here and one is over there, okay? The location is actually not important, but I, I you know, done. Now, uh, let's see now. Uh, we applied our material, very good. So now we can go to uh, start generative structure analysis. It's a static problem that we are doing. Let's change the element size similar to what we did uh, earlier, 0.01 in the first video segment, linear, to make it run faster. Now, if you double click on this, on this generic uh, description of the element, double click on it, notice that there are several tabs, several tabs, and uh, one of them says local. What I want to do is make sure that there is a node at this point and there is a node at that point. So I'm going to select impose point at this point. I want to make sure that this is going to be one of the nodes. Notice that it turns greenish, right? Say OK. Another one at right there. And then say OK. Uh, did I do that? Let me turn this thing around. Yep, right there. Both of them are, are added. And then we say Okay, you see, if I don't do that, there is no guarantee that, uh, well, if I, if I don't do that, then I cannot apply 
restraints or nodes in Katia. Okay, uh, Katia is a uh, is 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 cannot does not deal with nodes when it comes to applying loads and rest restraints. It's uh, you can apply it to features, points, edges, you know, faces, but not to nodes. Okay, but by doing this thing, I make sure that this point that I created is actually a node. So, for example, if you say, uh, show me the mesh, show me the mesh, and change the rendering so that you can see them, see them, I, I can assure you that this point is going to be a particular node, and this point is going to be a particular node, okay? And I can apply apply forces and restraints if needed to, to these points, which are automatically going to get transferred to the nodes. Okay, that's good. Remember, I said that there are some subtle, uh, subtle, uh, and not so obvious steps that you have to go through if you're doing this thing manually as, as we're doing it now. So deactivate the mesh, deactivate the mesh. Okay. Now, first of all, first of all, that entire bottom, that entire bottom face is we can put it on a slider surface slider surface because when you think about it there's no reason uh, this edge actually uh, you know warps up okay so any point on this on this face any point on this face does not move in the z direction okay now user defined restraint this point this point i'm going to fix it in two direction direction x and y i don't have to do i don't have to uh, uh, fix it in direction z because it's already on a surface slider we don't have to do that okay right there okay and the point on th this other point I'm going to fix it to uh, from motion in the direction, I don't know, one or two. It really doesn't matter. I don't have to fix it. I don't have to fix it in direction Z because it's already on a surface slider. So when you think about it, when you think about it, uh, this point actually does not move in direction one, two, three. This point does not move in direction one and two, or let's say one and three, okay? direction uh, x and z and all the points on that face do not move in direction z so therefore one two three rule applies i did not have to create three points if i could have but if i did that third point i would have fixed it uh, from moving in direction z but the surface slider does it look one two three rule works but you've got to be careful on how you do it Okay, so what else do we have? All right, so we have to apply this, the, the pressure uh, by taking the thrust divided by this area. Now, uh, let's see, uh, where is the pressure? There's the pressure, add the formula. Well, first of all, this, the, the support is this. Okay, and uh, this is the correct value from the first run, but if you wanted to do it again, it would have been the uh, edit formula. It's equal to 400 Newton divided. And uh, let me remind you, we actually measured that area in terms of millimeters squared. It's, it was right there. And we can just double click on it and we say okay, and it will turn into 268 kilopascal as it. As, as it happened before. All right, good. Now, now we have to apply the acceleration. So the acceleration is right there. There's the acceleration. The support is, because it's a body force, it doesn't matter what you pick, it's going to be the entire body, okay? And it's going to be the thrust 400 divided by the mass of this. The only thing is that I don't have the mass of that. So what I do is I say, okay, all right, oops, did I take it? 
uh, let me see. Okay, uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I didn't put actually any correct number. Let, let me let me cancel that. Let me cancel that and delete it for a second because I told you I don't know the math. So how do we get the math? We go to the part design. We click on this uh, little icon here. See that? See this? The weight, the mass. See? Measure inertia. And it already gives me the mass 1.921. 1.921. Okay, and it's uh, right there 1.921. So we go back to analysis. Okay, so apply a acceleration on the object. Okay, and if you want to know what it is, you say edit the formula. Uh, acceleration equal to uh, 400 newton divided by 1.921. So I suspect you can go ahead and select it from here. Uh, where is that? 1.921. Yeah, do the math, and we say okay. And this is the number that comes up. Now, so in the direction Z. So I applied the thrust, applied the acceleration, but nothing is fixed. If I run this thing, it's going to bomb out because I do have to apply the one, two. Oh, I did have the, the one, two, three rule, right? Oh, yeah, I did. Have, I do have the one, two, three rule, so it should not bomb out. But if I did not have these, if I did not have these, then it would crash. And then you have to go and apply the spin. So let me see now. Uh, uh, run it. Don't worry about that. There, it did run. And if you plot the one meter stress, if you plot the one meter stress, we should get the range zero to two hundred, approximately approximately zero to two hundred seventy. Uh, uh, kilopascal. Yeah, zero to two hundred and seventy kilopascal. Change the rendering. Material shading right there. Okay. So this was done manually. I had to know that the three points have to be taken and one three degrees of freedom, another point two degrees of freedom, and the third one three degrees of freedom equal to zero. Now I could have cheated too. Okay by saying that, okay, let me delete, let me erase these uh, restraints, the one that I did, all of them. Let's apply the isostatic restraint. I did it manually, but let's see if Katia can do it automatically for us. Okay, now run. and pray to get the same values. Yes, you do. Okay, look, <laughs> you don't. So uh, you have to be careful. When you use that isostatic restraint, depending on what you do, uh, you may have a problem, okay? So, uh, you got to be very careful because, uh, let me undo these so that you can see what happened. Undo, 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 undo. This is what I had, okay? This is what I had, and it worked. This is what I imposed manually. And it, and it worked. Okay? Right there. But then what I did is I went and, uh, you know, I just replaced these with isostatic restraint. And I cautioned you that you got to be careful about applying isostatic restraint, okay? So uh, uh, this is not good. Okay. All right. 
Uh, this is uh, now you can see that uh, just removing those uh, manual restraints and instead putting isostatic uh, isostatic restraint did not uh, solve the problem correctly. But you can still salvage some work. In other words, uh, if you also in addition to that isostatic restraint that you put in there, you put a surface slider on the bottom face. Okay? I don't have restraint at these two points anymore, but we know that this should remain uh, uh, flat. So isostatic restraint and that surface slider together, let's run it and see what happens. I'll run. Okay, it did run. Let's look at the one meter stress distribution. See, it solved the problem. Zero, pretty much zero to two seventy. Kilopascal, 273 kilopascal. This is why when I do my course uh, uh, in CAE, I don't talk about this too much because it is true that you can use the isostatic strain and run it and you get color and numbers, but if it's not done properly, if it's not used properly, it can run into all kinds of issues. Now, there will be another follow-up video segment which I'll be talking about uh, not an accelerating object but uh, an object in equilibrium however it's uh, free to move as a rigid body okay for people who are interested in rocket the first video segment on this and the follow-up which I just did should be good enough